everybody um i had got some questions about how a hopper works um if i'm going to get into the hopper business you know some little ins and outs about it all right well figured i would do this kind of tutorial of kind of explaining a little bit about it uh, pretty simple um, this is a 43 foot trailer kind of like your standard size you can get ones longer you can get them spread axle if you you know you want it which the spread axle is going to be a little longer to accommodate the the gap oh you climb the ladder up here and of course you see which loaders then bent some of my bows but this is pretty much the inside of the hopper you got your support braces you have these straps here to strengthen up the trailer as well you probably can get it without a load gauge but usually this is you know my load gauge when i load especially places where they don't have a scale knowing how to read your gauges whether you got a low gauge in the truck or not but you can go off the low gauge on the trailer too it may take you a few loads to get it figured out but i could use my truck i use the truck and the trailer together because i know where my truck needs to be on my drives and then i know where the trailer needs to be on my drives usually if i'm right if i'm going to be at eighty i i'm anywhere between 60 and 70. anything over 70 i'm going to be heavy um i mean you have a ladder back here in the back as well but <clears throat> the difference between your commodity doors and your ag doors the, these are the commodity doors they are bigger your hopper here your tub is a lot bigger your ag doors they're probably going to stop about right here so and that's for hauling some of this fine powdery stuff you know if you, the bigger the space for it to come out the better it'll come out all right we open just like any landing gear you got a two-speed gear to open your door hopefully i don't get in trouble for that but oh we can climb up in here and this is inside um you have to try to make sure you keep these in the best shape because once you start getting dings in your slopes material likes to to you know stick and not flow out that's why on the outside you'll have which where these rivets at you'll have those knock rails that's what those angle irons are for the your knock rails so this is one hopper and on the other side of that wall you have the other one close it back up And you always have to make sure that that lock is over that one because that prevents that prevents your door from opening up going down the road. 
So you have a vibrator for the front and you have a vibrator for the rear, which all they do is vibrate the tub to loosen the material, to break the material so it'll fall out. And these are what I was telling you about. These are your knock rails. When you have to, you know, manually work the material out, you hit these knock rails. You don't hit on the tub itself. You hit these knock rails and you can see how it kind of resonates and vibrates. It works the material loose and so you can get it out. But yep, you never, you, you never hit these tubs because you will dent them and then you will hate yourself because believe it or not, that material on a, on a dent, it will hang up. So you can order them with, you know, more knot rails, depends on how, you know, if you want to buy your own trailer, spec it out. Um, Sometimes they don't even have these, the knot rails on the back, depending on the company. But they're, they're pretty simple to work with. Like I say we got, you know, knot rails on both sides and sometimes you can get vibrators on both sides and on the back and they all work together. Um, I need to climb up here and uh check out this this back door. See if I can open it or not. I can't be dropping material. Hey, that's a little bit on the door. I really don't want to open it. Can't be dropping material. But as you can see pretty much the same concept as the front one. Only difference is that front wall does not have those, uh, the, re the two ridges. But yep, um, typically I try to get a little more weight on the tandem of the trailer than on my drives. I don't go overboard because it will make for a rough ride if you do. Let's say you have all majority, 80% of your weight in the back hopper, you know, it could make for a rough ride. So I typically try to get, you know, maybe 3,000 pounds more on the rear of the trailer than I will have on my drives. That rides better to me. Um, which the facility we're at now, we're going to load um, fertilizer. We haul, you can haul a lot of different commodities in these trailers, but your doors will depend on what you can haul. The reason why they call these commodity doors because you can haul anything because they're big enough to let a lot of sorts of variety of, of material out it's like the fine stuff um like your ddg your wheat meals your rice meal um so uh, drawing a blank some of the other things but you can haul you know big stuff too and there's sometimes people haul they go to a quarry and load you know some rocks up in here or inner hopper I personally wouldn't do it because that's rough on on your your tubs. Dropping rocks in here, you in, you know it dents it up. But <clears throat> they're pretty simple, easy to work. Um, if you ever get into it, you like I said, you need to know how to read your gauges. If the trailer has gauges on there, because you're not always loading on a scale or at a facility with a scale. 
So to get your weights right, you need to be able to read your gauges. I go to a lot of places, they ask, you got gauges on your truck? Yes, I do. Do you know how to read them? Believe it or not, there are guys come in there, got gauges on the truck and trailer, and they do not know. I was like, I don't know. Well, I know where mine at. That's one, the number one thing that I checked out when I started pulling this thing. Know where my weight is off of my gauges. Um, but yeah, if y'all have any other questions um, in this video, hey, you can ask me in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them and help you out if you are interested or you're trying to get into hauling a hopper. Like I say, they are pretty simple. Um, you can ask questions and a lot of guys will actually help you if you get hooked up to one and you go to a facility and, and you got a question about something. Don't, don't hesitate to ask because believe it or not, we all started somewhere in this industry doing whatever and didn't know nothing about it. I knew nothing about a hopper when I first started pulling one. It was something I always wanted to do because I liked the way they look and I just, hey, I like to pull a hopper. And I got out here and I knew nothing about it, but I had to ask. Thankfully, I had friends that I could call and ask and you know ask questions um, when I pulled up and asked another driver about something. But yep, that's that's kind of the the basic, you know, the gist to walk around. Um, oh, and one other thing is there is a air dump which they put put it up here for you to pull and you dump your suspension on the back of the trailer, and that is I say that's there for two reasons. One some of the material if it's stuck just say uh, on, on my on this i use do the back on this back slope you know it's it's sloping up right here up to the back well if the material is here and there's a big wall it goes up and it's not breaking loose if all of it broke loose and fell down it's gonna hit that suspension. Well, you can dump that and let all the air out the bags to prevent, you know, suspension damage or that, that shock on your airbags. Two, you can dump it because if you pull over the pit and you have some material that's, you know, real dusty, has a lot of dust, you can dump your air, which in turn is going to get the trailer lower to the ground and you don't have a lot of that that spillage where it, when it comes out you know things when it comes out of here is going to flow out where if you bring the trailer down it's less likely to flow out to the sides and less likely to throw out a lot of dust so because you're getting lower to the ground i don't always use it but sometimes i do And two, it helps when you go to a facility and they load you with a front end loader and it's not tall enough to, uh, to dump over this trailer because this is a 90 high, which they make a lot of different ones. The one that I had before this was an 84 and then this is a 90. And I don't know, that second truck up there, that is a, 102 that's a 102 because it's really tall so they make a lot of different ones um and whether it's 102 wide or not this is a 102 wide but yep that's that's pretty much all i can tell you about uh about a hopper 
like i say it's a lot of different commodities that you can haul we haul a lot of things i mean as y'all can see in my early videos i've hauled cucumbers before in these in which they make to the, go to a place where they make pickles so yeah it seems like the possibilities are endless in um what you can haul in one of these which is kind of kind of cool but if you have any questions feel free to drop it in the comment section and i'll do my best to answer your questions thank you y'all have a good one